Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Mr. Heinrich. We're looking at another progress check from AP Classroom. This is Unit 3, Number 1. Let's get into it. A curved track leads into a circular loop of radius R as shown in this figure. A block of mass M is released from rest from a height H on the track. The block slides down the track around the loop without losing contact with the track. That's important. And all frictional forces are negligible. And what do they want in Part A? Well, all of this stuff basically tells us to draw a free body diagram. Okay, so this is A1, and we have our mass represented by this dot, and there's the top of the track, and this is point P. So it's a mass. We undoubtedly have gravity, but the track is also pushing against this mass as the mass clears the loop. So as the track pushes down, we call that the normal force. There you go. A1 is done. A2, let's take a look. Starting with the conservation of energy, derive an expression for the speed of the block at point P. So they say to use the conservation of energy. Well, that means my initial energy has to equal my final energy. But keep in mind, we can go one step further. We can actually say our mechanical energy equals our final mechanical energy because there's no friction. There's no forces like air resistance or friction to steal any of our mechanical energy. So to be successful here, we should redraw the model real fast. There's point P right there. There's my mass starting at height H. And we know this is radius R. So can we agree that this height at point P is actually twice that radius? Looks good to me. And I'm going to call this my initial position. And this is my final position over here where point P is. So initially, since I start from rest, I don't have kinetic energy, but I do have a height in a gravitational field. So I would say I've got gravitational potential energy initially. Finally, when I get over here at the top, I've got potential energy final because I'm at a height of 2R and I must have kinetic energy. Now there's a lot of ways to argue why I have kinetic energy. Well, the first one is easy. They're asking for the speed at the top of the loop. So there must be some kinetic energy. The other one is, well, I'm a little bit lower than that height, so there must still be some mechanical energy that's not potential, and therefore it's kinetic. So those are some ways to justify that we do have kinetic energy at this location. All right, what is potential energy equal to? MGHI. Final potential energy would be MGHF. In kinetic energy, we can always sub in one-half MV, in this case, F squared. And the cool thing about Conservation of mechanical energy, the masses cancel out. Solving for that velocity, I would subtract GHF over, which would leave me with 1 half VF squared. I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. And I'm going to flip this expression around so that VF squared equals, notice I'm going to factor out my G as well. And before I take the square root, I'm going to do a substitution. Now, I didn't tell you what we need to put our answer in terms of, but we need to put it in terms of mass, R, H, and fundamental constants like G. So you can see while these are HI and HF, they're not quite in our terms. What is HI? It's just H. What is HF? It's just 2R. Making that substitution, I'm nearly there. Now, I left it like this without the square root for a reason coming up. But let's find the answer by taking the square root of both sides, and this is the end of A2. Okay, A3, I'm gonna let you read it later, but A3 is asking us to find the force the track exerts on the mass at point P. Now remember, there's two forces at point P, so the force that the track exerts must be the normal force. So this is what we're trying to find at that location right there. It also requires us to cite a fundamental physics principle. So for A3, I know the fundamental physics principle is Newton's second law, F net equals MA. Remember, we're in circular motion, and these two forces, they are both center-seeking, and therefore they are the centripetal force. Centripetal force is just F net. So I'm gonna plug both of these in for F net, Set it equal to m times v squared over r. ac 
centripetal acceleration is V squared over R. Let's be particular to their term, so I'm going to put a capital R there. And I'm going to subtract FG to the other side. So I'm going to say FN equals MV squared over R minus FG. Now remember, FG can be substituted with mass times gravitational acceleration. So I'm going to do that right here. And I'm almost done. But you can see that if I look at these terms, they are not quite those terms. So what am I going to do? You can see now why I didn't take the square root right away. I can take that whole expression that I just boxed and plug it in for v squared because that's what it is. So I would say fn is equal to m times 2g h minus 2r all over that r minus mg. And notice all of those things line up with those terms. We're done with A3. And right there is A3's verbiage, all that stuff right there that my cursor is boxing in. Go ahead and pause the video, read it for yourself if you want to. Let's move on to part B. If frictional forces between the block and the track were not negligible, meaning we are considering friction now, indicate which of the following changes could be made to the track to allow the block to still pass through point P without losing contact with the track. So looking at option one, I know that's wrong. If I lowered the initial height, I would have even less potential energy to start with. And with friction stealing some of the energy, there's no way I would have enough kinetic energy for the block to clear the loop. So we can't do option one. Option three would also not work. If we move the loop further to the right along the track, that's just more track for friction to act along. And therefore we are reducing our kinetic energy again. So that's not gonna work we won't have enough kinetic energy to clear the loop. Option two is the right option. This is the justification. Point P must be lowered because starting with the same potential energy, the mass would lose mechanical energy as it slid down the hill due to friction doing work, period. This would result in less kinetic energy as the mass approached the loop. With less kinetic energy, the only way the mass can stay in contact with the track is if point P's height is lowered. That's it. Go ahead, rewind it, check it out again if you need to, write it in your own words. I encourage you to do that as a matter of fact because that helps you understand the concept even better. Hey, once again, if this was helpful, like, subscribe, ring the bell, leave me a comment. Maybe you want me to go to an FRQ that's further along in the series. Maybe you have a question about this one or a previous one. I'm all ears. I'll talk to you soon.